You always hear about the military might of the world's superpower nations. But have you ever thought to yourself, what are the smallest and weakest armies out there? Well, you're not alone, as so have we. If you're interested to shine a light on these puny armies, then look no further than our list with a few surprising inclusions. From China to Vatican City, here are 15 of the most embarrassing armies in the world. Number 15. China China's military is full of pathetic, spoiled, and soft soldiers. At least it is according to officials from within the Asian powerhouse. This can't be right. I thought China was an efficient machine capable of dominating the world. Well, they might have been if it wasn't for the one-child policy put into place in the 1980s. That's right, the Chinese government really shot themselves in the foot when they put this policy, which restricts a family from having more than one child, into place. The result was generations of overly pampered and spoiled children who grew up with no siblings, meaning all of their parents' and grandparents' attention was directed right at them. While this must have been nice for the kid, it meant the recruits for the Chinese Liberation Army were awful, non-disciplined, overly enthusiastic soldiers. If you were to dare to go against this one-child policy, you were left to feel the wrath of the Chinese state, not to mention the fact that you would have your child taken away from you with no way for the parents to contact them or know their whereabouts. Full of wimps, the CLA was usually left looking embarrassed whenever they overstepped their capabilities on the international stage. In 2015, the government changed their ways and finally allowed two children to be born to a family, with the hope of a stronger army coming to fruition at some point down the line. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Vatican City the leader of the Catholic Church isn't as well protected as you might at first think. The Pope is a very important figure who is seen by some to be God's representative on Earth. So with such prestige comes much needed security. That is where the Pontifical Swiss Guard steps in. This small army of around 135 Swiss soldiers is sworn in to protect the Pope with their lives. Whilst this small army may have been around for over 500 years in its service of protection, protecting the leader of the Catholic Church, they're not the most intimidating of armies. With a set of armor which looks more than outdated, and a sword and halberd in hand, they aren't the most modern security team out there, to say the least. This Renaissance period attire is worn by soldiers who are aged between 19 and 30, are single and Catholic. If you fancy joining this peculiar army, then you must also be at least 5 foot 8 inches in height, hold a high school or university degree, have gone through Swiss military training, and have Swiss citizenship. Whilst this might seem like a pretty pathetic force to try and protect one of the most adorned people on the planet, they are trained in unarmed combat and in how to use various modern guns. They're not exactly going to be entering into a gunfight with a renaissance period sword, but still. Number 13. St. Kitts and Nevis a country's military is the backbone of a nation's defense. Whilst this usually means they're a strong force not to be reckoned with, that isn't always the case. The nation of St. Kitts and Nevis in the Caribbean has an army of only 150 to 300 personnel tasked with defending the country. I can't imagine they'd be much of a challenge for the military might of any country around the world, or even a couple of groups of Cub Scouts for that matter. The St. Kitts and Nevis Defense Force was re-established on the 1st of June 1997 and do provide plenty of benefits for its people. 
Small is certainly mighty in this case, as they have been cracking down on the nation's drug trade and illegal activity in a more of a policing role than you would imagine a military to carry out. Imagine stealing a chocolate bar from the shop and having a marine chase you down the street and tackle you. This involvement by the Defense Force in more policing roles has led to a blurring of the police and military. Still, with a population of only around 52,000 on the Caribbean island, I can't imagine they would need a bigger army. Number 12. Equatorial Guinea Equatorial Guinea is found along the west coast of Africa. Located next to Gabon and Cameroon, this nation is notable for its tiny army of only 1,400 soldiers and the fact it struck oil in 1995 and made the big time. While this is good in the sense that at least they won't be jumping at the chance to start a war with their small army, it doesn't exactly fill the population with confidence that they're safe. Neighboring Cameroon has an army of 12,500 troops, for example. I'm no math or military wizard, but I'd say 12,500 troops could bully an army of 1,400 with ease on the battlefield. Equatorial Guinea isn't the most stable of countries either, with its leader, President Teodoro Obiang, coming into power from his position as a general after overthrowing his uncle, Francisco Macias Nguema. Sounds like some drama you would expect to hear from a soap opera or reality TV episode. If I was the leader of Equatorial Guinea, I would ensure I was on good terms with its far stronger neighbors, making sure I remember to wish them a happy birthday every year for a start. Number 11. Seychelles The paradisal land of Seychelles off the east coast of Africa is a thing of beauty. With clear skies, jaw-dropping beaches, and tranquil waters, the last thing you would think of when you're relaxing and enjoying a drink here is war. The number of active personnel of the Seychelles army only stands at 650 personnel, although they have plenty of foreign help at hand. Seychelles began life as an uninhabited island before Europeans stumbled across this gem hidden at sea in the 16th century. There was a bit of a tug-of-war between France and Britain until the Brits took full control of Seychelles in the late 18th century. This reign ended in 1976 when the country proclaimed independence. The government wanted to ramp up their strength, so took drastic steps to encourage foreign investment, particularly for the Seychelles People's Defense Force. This foreign investment included gunboats donated by the UAE and China, as well as patrol vessels courtesy of India. It just shows you how important it is to have connections in high places. Still, I would take a heavenly, naturally beautiful landscape over a large military any day. Number 10. Luxembourg If you're looking to start a war with a nation, Luxembourg is among the easiest opponents out there. The country literally has no navy or air force. Talk about leaving yourself open for attack. The reason behind the lack of a navy is quite simple. Luxembourg is a landlocked nation, so they see no need or have no capacity for it. I guess that makes sense. Can't get attacked by sea if you're nowhere near the sea in the first place. The Luxembourg army was merged into the force publique along with the gendarmerie and the police. This public force army is an all-volunteer force which has been around since 1967. With a current might of 450 soldiers, 340 enlisted recruits, and 100 civilians, and a decent budget of $369 million. Whilst they might not exactly be the biggest armies in the entire world, they are a nation of only 600,000 people, so they're not exactly going to have an army to rival that of America, for example. Number 9. Cape Verde Cape Verde is an otherworldly island found in the central Atlantic Ocean. As well as its stunning scenery, the island also has an embarrassingly small defense force. While some of the largest countries in the world have militaries with hundreds of thousands of personnel, Cape Verde can just about reach a thousand in their count. This puny number consists of the National Guard on land and the Coast Guard at sea, in addition to a small group of support staff. The people of Cape Verde can sleep in peace knowing that an attack isn't imminent, despite the small force at hand. See, Cape Verde faces almost no military threats, making investing into this army an almost pointless tactic. They do need to keep on their toes, however, to ensure the safety of their people. But what threats does this involve? 
counterterrorism, combating drug trafficking, providing disaster relief, and patrolling seas takes up most of the on-duty personnel. Whilst they might not spend much of their budget on the army, they have friends in the form of Brazil, Portugal, and the United States who provide both material and training help. So before you think this piece of paradise is easy pickings for invasion, then you have another thing coming. Number 8. Sao Tome and Principe There are some reputations you want to avoid having as a country. Having the smallest army in the whole continent is definitely up there on the top of the list. That is the reality for the African island nation of Sao Tome and Principe, who's fit for military personnel only being a reported 20,188. Even though the number of police officers has continued to rise in this country, citizens are still not pleased. The consensus is that the police are ineffective and corrupt. What a PR nightmare! The poor public image of the police isn't helped by the fact that the infantry's equipment is very basic and only replaced after 25 years when the tropical climates have beaten it to death. This crowd is far from the type who keep updated with every edition, clearly, unlike some Apple users. With poor pay, terrible and unsafe working conditions, and serious nepotism in the deciding of who gets promoted, it should come as little surprise that there was a coup in 1995 and 2003. I'm just surprised there isn't one every year, but to be honest, those in charge clearly have other priorities in mind, as they spend less than 1% of Sao Tome and Principe's gross domestic product on the military. Never has the proverb, you reap what you sow, been more applicable. Number 7. The Bahamas the Bahamas is a place which is at the top of most people's holiday destination wish lists. While this Caribbean country found next to Cuba is a dreamland for most, it doesn't exactly have a strong army. Actually, it doesn't have any army. You heard that right. Talk about being confident no one would want to invade you. The Bahamas might not have an army to brag about, but they do have a decent force at sea in the form of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. With about 1,600 members, it is the largest of all the Commonwealth Caribbean navies. Not a bad substitute for having no army or air force. So all of those visiting the Bahamas can lie back in peace knowing that you're in safe hands as the Royal Bahamas Defense Force has been sworn to protect, defend, patrol, and assist those in the Bahamas. The full package then. So if you ever plan on invading the beautiful Bahamas, attacking from anywhere but the sea would be a good tactic. Number 6. Panama Panama is a transcontinental country, linking both Central and South America. Whilst this might be an interesting fact, you probably know Panama more for its tax haven qualities which have been mentioned in the news in recent years. Panama imposes no income, corporate capital gains, or estate taxes on offshore entities that only engage in business outside of the jurisdiction. So it's little surprise that the ultra-wealthy of the world choose Panama to store their money out of reach of the tax man. One of its least known qualities is the fact that Panama has completely gotten rid of their standing armies. That's right, despite being located in a very unstable part of the world, Panama joined its neighboring Costa Rica in being army free. Considering the number of wealthy individuals who hide their money in Panama, I'm sure it is a well-protected place. They aren't just local hippies with no security force either. Panama maintains armed police, internal security forces, and small air and maritime forces. This must be a relief for inhabitants, especially considering they border with Colombia, who doesn't exactly have the greatest of reputations when it comes to ranking in the world's most peaceful countries. Number 5. Mauritius Mauritius is an island nation in the Indian Ocean off the east side of Africa. While it's certainly one of those places which you would definitely brag about visiting on your holidays, this picture-perfect place might be covered in natural wonder, but it's certainly not covered in military might. Mauritius has no military, 
with all of the duties usually carried out by the military, police, and security being carried out by the 10,000 strong Mauritius police force. The day-to-day -day dishing out of the law is carried out by the 8,000 member national police force which ensures the law is being enforced in the country's daily activities. There are only a measly two paramilitary units in Mauritius, with the 1,500 strong special mobile force and the 500 strong national coast guard taking this coveted spot. For a nation which is known and loved for its beautiful natural landscapes, which includes almost 150 kilometers of beaches, forests, and all types of wonder at their doorstep, I doubt they really care about having an embarrassing army. I bet if you visited this place, the first thought that comes to mind wouldn't be, this place could really do with a few more fighter jets. Number 4. The Gambia the Gambian National Army takes minimalism to a new extreme. Mentioning that a new batch of 620 recruits is joining a nation's army wouldn't be something to brag about usually, but when the army's only 2,500 people in size to begin with, it's quite the news to write about. This modest army might not be the greatest for waging war on rival nations, but it's pretty good at keeping costs low. Where else on the planet are you going to find an army who shares a single jet and two aircrafts? Not many places outside of Gambia, that's for sure. Whilst the Gambians are dividing up a rota for who can use the plane, nations like the US have thousands of these aircraft at their disposal. But then again, what do you expect when the country of Gambia only spends a million bucks a year on their army? I'm pretty sure the US probably spends more than that supplying its military with coffee every year. Still, considering it is Africa's smallest non-island nation, it's not exactly going to be rivaling anyone for a spot at the world superpower table anytime soon. Number 3. Monaco Monaco is known as a billionaire's playground. And with a range of luxurious casinos and revered events such as the Monaco Yacht Show and the Monaco Grand Prix filling the calendar, I can see why. There are plenty of places for the richest among us to spend their humongous fortunes, to say the least. Despite this wealth, Monaco's military is anything but high-end. The Principality of Monaco is the world's second smallest sovereign state, with the Vatican City State in Italy being the only place smaller. With such a small size comes an even smaller military capability. How small? 255 soldiers small. With an additional 35 civil employees, Monaco's military is the third smallest in the entire world. Due to their size, they must rely on their neighboring France for assistance, sort of like a kid calling on his older brother to protect him from the bullies on the playground. Monaco's army consists of 82 people. It's only about three classrooms of students. To put it into perspective just how embarrassingly small that is, there are more members of the Monaco Military Orchestra than of the military itself, with 85 musicians to be exact. This unbelievably makes it the only country whose army is smaller than its military orchestra. This reliance of Monaco on its big brother France has its drawbacks, as seen in 1962 when the French president Charles de Gaulle threatened to cut off Monaco's electricity and water if income tax wasn't imposed on the Monaco residents by Prince Rainier III. Unsurprisingly, Monaco obliged. Number 2. Iceland Known across the world as the land of fire and ice, Iceland is a country filled with contrasting landscapes. In one corner you have some of the largest glaciers in the whole of the continent of Europe, whilst next door you have some of the most active and violent volcanoes on the planet. While in the winter months, there are days where the sun barely rises for five hours. Iceland is a beautiful but old country that I would recommend anyone visiting, but it is embarrassingly weak military-wise. In regards to its defense, it consists of the Icelandic Coast Guard whose main duties involve patrolling waters to make sure no one's drowning as well as keeping an eye on the airspace. Other units include the National Commissioner's National Security and Special Forces units. Despite all of this, Iceland is actually the only NATO member which maintains no standing army, and with its Coast Guard only consisting of three ships and four aircraft, it's safe to say that Iceland's natural beauty is certainly more notable than its military might. Don't worry, Iceland, we still think you're great. You still have your Viking roots, northern lights, and the mountain from Game of Thrones to brag about.
Who would have known just how laid back certain countries are in regards to their army size? Oh well, I suppose this is kind of a step towards world peace, I guess. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.